Hey crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press. Today I'm going to show you some easy ways to pull your cards together using pattern paper and washi tape. This is part of the dig it out and use it up hop. I hope that you will hop along with us. There are some great ideas on how to use some of the items that you already have in your stash. So let's go ahead and get started. First up, I want to show you how you can use pattern paper as a background for your cards. I know that seems really simple and it is. <laughs> I'm just cutting a piece of pattern paper down to the same size as my card, which is an A2 card base there. I glued it on. I do like wet glue because it allows me a little bit of wiggle room. And then I can just go ahead and decorate the front with some images that I've already stamped and colored and cut them out. I don't know if you've been hopping along with the Daily Marker 30 Day Coloring Challenge. I have, so I have a bunch of images that are already cut out and ready to be used. So I've got uh, this little peony set from the Rabbit Hole Designs, and I used the Celebrate, which is another rabbit hole stamp. And then I also used one of my stitched ovals to pull that card together. And you can see how quick that, that can come together when you use pattern paper for your background. So let's take a look at another background option. Just like pattern paper, you can make your own backgrounds using washi tape. So I've gone ahead and pulled out a couple different rolls from my stash. Some of these I've never even used before, um, but they're really pretty and they kind of coordinate with that rabbit that I've already colored and cut out. And I'm just going to take a couple uh, different rolls and I will add strips along the blank cardstock that I've got there. It's just a, a little bit bigger than an A2 card base there so that I can trim it down. And I'm using my grid on, on my mat there to help me get them straight. The first one I, I made sure to, to get straight and then each one after that I just kind of line up on top or below each other. And when I've gone ahead and got the last strip down, you can see it it comes together pretty quick, but my head was in the way for part of that. Sorry about that. So I've uh, skipped that a little bit. And if you need to reposition them a little bit, washi tape is very forgiving, so you can generally pull it up and, and move it around if you need to. And then I'll just take it to my trimmer and go ahead and trim off the excess. And then I also, I decided to cut it down a little bit more so that I would have a, a border for the card. I wanted some of the white to pop around the edges. So I trimmed this down a little smaller, gave myself about a half an inch border. And then I can pull it together um, and put the card all together. So that rabbit is the caffeinated rabbit from the rabbit hole designs which i love i think that's probably my favorite stamp from them um, and then i've gone ahead and die cut my sentiment so i wanted it to say happy birthday instead of happy birthday so i've used the alphabet that's the carly alphabet from icrafter and birthday is part of the um, my favorite things large scripty um, sentiment and i've stacked them up like I think it's three layers, maybe even four that I've got stacked up and then just glued him down and added a couple sequins and shimmer to his eyes. Okay, so let's look at another way of adding definition to the background paper. Sometimes uh, you, your edges are a little bit boring, so you might want to dress them up a little bit. For this card, the pattern paper that I've chosen has some shimmer already in it. It's got some foiled accents, but I'm going to use an oval that's got some uh, glitter paper there, gold glitter paper. So I want to add some glitter to the edges of my pattern paper here. So all I'm doing is taking Versamark and applying it with a sponge. I do have a, a little separate sponge head for my Versamark ink. And then I just went around one side at a time and applied the Versamark ink and then sprinkled on some of that gold glitter embossing powder from WOW. And then I'll heat that one side, then I can move on to the next side. And like I said, just doing one side at a time so that it allows you not to get it all over your hands and end up brushing it off. Once you've got the edges all done, then you can go ahead and embellish. I've got this little caffeinated bee and butterfly, again from Rabbit Hole Designs, and my uh, sentiment is also from them. And I brought back in those ovals again, just so I can pull this card together really quickly. 
and I love how it came together. Added a couple shimmery gems there and some highlights to the eyes. I think it's a fun card there. Okay, so this technique is pretty similar um, to our washi tape, except we're going to use strips of pattern paper. So I've already gone ahead and colored my little spider here. This is the caffeinated spider. And I grabbed some papers from my stash that are sort of in the same color family. And I've got a white card base there that I'm just going to dress up. So what I'm doing here is just trimming down strips. I'm not going to make you watch me trim all of them, but I do want to show you um, a little technique that you can use if you're cutting narrow strips in your trimmer and you have trouble holding it. I have a guard that's um, in place there, that clear plastic guard, and sometimes it gets in the way. So if I'm, I line it up and then I put the guard down, the paper might shift. So what I do is I grab a piece of purple tape and I'll just use that to hold the little narrow strips in place and then it can't shift until after I pull it back up again. So you can see I'm, I'm doing this for both. And for this background, I just cut a bunch of random size strips. They're all parallel, but they're all different sizes too. And when I have them all cut out, I just grab them and I'm lining them up on that card base there. This one, uh, the, the fold is up at the top edge there. Um, it'll be a on the a side opening, but right now the way we're looking at it, it's at the top. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to glue my strips down and I'm going to make sure that they are all lined up with the folded edge. And I apologize, my head's in the way again, <laughs> um, but you, I'm not going to make you watch me glue them all down anyhow. So I just go through and after I got them all in place, I had a little bit bigger of a gap than I wanted. Um, I, I was purposely leaving some white space between the strips, but I did have a little bit more of a gap than I wanted. So I added a little strip of washi tape to fill in there. And then I'm trimming off the bottom, not the fold edge, the opposite edge. And then I did have uh, that little piece of washi tape hanging off the other edge there. But all of my strips of pattern paper were all lined up, so I didn't need to trim any of those. And you can see now we've got a nice background for our spider. But before I put them together, I want to show you um, that spider is also from the rabbit hole designs and I brought back that Carly alphabet from iCrafter for my sentiment. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and piece. Um, I want to add some more definition to one of the cups. I want to make the cups kind of match part of the background there. So I'm going to do paper piecing, which just means that I'm going to stamp um, onto a piece of that pattern paper. And I only need one cup there because I, I just want to do one cup. Um, and so I don't need to stamp the whole image. And I'm just going to kind of line it up in my Misty there and stamp just that, that one cup really. And then I can take it and I can fussy cut that. Now, if you know me, you know I hate fussy cutting. <laughs> I use my scan and cut or dies for everything. But this is a tiny little piece and it, it's quick. Um, and I am not worrying about the handle. I'm cutting that off because I've already colored the spider and the mug is already yellow. So if I have a little bit of anything showing like the handle, it, it'll work just fine. So I just went ahead and cut out just the face of that mug. And now here's another trick to add definition to your pieces. You can just grab a black marker and go around the edges and that really does finish it. So if you have any like white edges showing or anything like that, it'll pull it all together nicely. And then I'm just going to glue it in place on my cup here. Had a little extra glue there, so I dabbed it off. And again, I like the wet glue for this because I have wiggle room there. And you can see it's not too different, but there is a little bit of that pattern there. So it's fun. And then I went ahead and pulled the whole card together, put my sentiment on. I put the let's hang out online. <laughs> I thought it would be fun because the spider hangs from the web. Okay, so let's look at another technique. This is another one for adding definition. Um, I've got this fun little, it's kind of like mermaid scales. Uh, pattern paper there, but my narwhal, I colored him in and he, I colored her purple, um, but there's not really any purple in that pattern paper. 
So just to bring in some of that color, I'm just going to ink blend the edges. I've got two shades of purple uh, Distress Oxide ink there, and I'm using my iCrafter blender brushes. These are awesome. They're all color coded or coordinated so that you can just use one brush for each color family. And I'm obviously speeding through this. Um, when you ink blend, I suggest adding a little bit of color at a time. It's much easier to add layers rather than try to, if you put too much, you can't take it away. Um, so I just kind of went around the edges real quick. And then now you can see that the, the purple is kind of brought in there and it matches our narwhal. But I want to put the thanks on there as well. And that still doesn't quite show very well. So I'm going to bring in a piece of vellum to um, add a little more um, add a, a little more difference there. And then also I want to use an extra shadow underneath the thanks. Um, that thanks is from Lawn Fawn and my uh, narwhal is rabbit hole designs. So I went ahead and pulled it all together. I just glued that white layer underneath and offset it a little bit. Okay. So let's talk about envelopes. Um, I always tell people no naked envelopes. <laughs> it's just kind of fun to add a little something to the outside of your card. Um, I don't usually ever color the whole thing. I just want to add a little hint. Um, but pattern paper is a great way to kind of bring the card and the, um, the envelope together. If you have extra pattern paper like I do for this spider card, I'm just going to go ahead and use my envelope punch board and I'm making my own envelope. There are uh, calculators online so you can um, make any size card. There's even box calculators. But you just basically follow it around, uh, punch and score. And then when you fold it up, you'll have the top and the bottom edges. And if you want, I don't, I don't like the sharp point there. So I'm just using the envelope, the other side of the punch board there. Um, and it has a corner rounder. So I went, I rounded those two points and then I'm just going to glue it together. And again, I like the wet glue cause it gives me wiggle room and I'm putting it along the outside edges. Um, wipe off any extra there. I didn't need it all the way up to the, the curve there. And then that kind of finishes off this envelope and you can see how when we put our little spider card in there, it's really cool. Another way that you can dress up an envelope is to make a liner. So I've grabbed some more of that pattern paper there. I've got it pretty much the full length of the envelope. If you make it too short, sometimes you can see it if your envelope is thin. Um, and I did trim it away so that it fits and I can still have the, um, the sealant line there. But when you make an envelope liner like this, you want to make sure that you only add adhesive or glue on the flap. You don't want to put it on the whole piece of liner paper because at the fold line there, the, the paper is going to move just slightly, a little bit, as you open and close that envelope. Um, it, it's kind of hard to see, but it, it will, and it buckle if you put adhesive on the whole thing. So don't do that. Just put it on the flap and it'll be fine. And that's a fun, fun way to dress up that envelope. Okay. One more, this one's quick and easy. Your, uh, washi tape is perfect for dressing up envelopes as well. A lot of people seal the back of their envelope and then put a piece of washi tape over it for decoration. You can do that. If you're going to hang on to the envelope and you're not sealing it yet, or if you're giving them as a gift, you can just put little strips on the front and it, it just dresses up the envelopes a little bit, makes them a little more special and uh, you can go to town with them. I like this washi tape because it's a, uh, it's kind of distressed. So it all works together nicely and it doesn't have to be perfect. But I thought that was a, a fun little way to dress up that envelope as well. Now, before I wrap it up, I wanted to show you how I store my scraps. All of my pattern paper scraps are stored by color in little pockets right next to my desk so I can grab them easily. My washi tape is in a drawer right behind me so I can grab that. And I think being organized really helps, helps you find them and grab them and you're more likely to use them. So I encourage you to find a way that works for you. So let's take just a quick look back at the cards that we made today. Um, different pattern paper and washi backgrounds. You can add definition with markers. You can add definition with the um, 
embossing powder like we did, uh, or even vellum and ink blending. You can use a drop shadow like I did on the thanks there. And don't forget your envelopes. I hope that this inspires you to pull out some of the pattern paper in your stash and try to find a way to, to bring it together. I know a lot of times we have pattern paper that doesn't really match the stamps that we have, but there are lots of ways you can try to incorporate them. And don't forget to hop along with us. There are tons of great ideas. And I've got links down below to my blog and the next stop in the hop. And I've also got a few more videos here. So feel free to check it out. If you're new to the channel, you can hit the like and subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this. And as always, my friend, thanks for watching.